Today we're going to talk about comma categories. Comma categories are a generalization of slice categories that we did last time, or rather slice categories are a special case of comma categories. Anyway, remember that when we did comma categories, we started with a category C and an object X in C, and then we could either form the slice over X or the slice under X. Now this time we're going to just soup it up a little bit, and we're going to start with a functor F from C to D. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to fix, so we fix this, and an object X in D. And what we're going to form, instead of slicing D over X, it's going to be called F down to X. Because the objects this time are going to be, they're going to be a bit like before, but a little bit more complicated. So X is still going to sit here at the bottom, and we're still going to have a morphism down to it. But it's not going to be any old morphism this time. It's got to be F of something. F of, let's call it C. Okay, so it's a pair, which is C in the category C, and a morphism P, uh, morphism from F of C to X. So your data, part of your data is something in C and part of your data is something in D, right? So now what's a morphism going to be? Well, let's write down what two of these things look like. So here's our X at the bottom that stays fixed. Perhaps I'll put it in blue again. This X at the bottom stays fixed. And we've got an F of C and we've got an F of C primed. And morphisms going down to X. And so you might think that, as before, a morphism should be a morphism like that, making this, this triangle commute. But we have to be a little bit careful. It's not any old morphism from here to here. Because, of course, think of our data that we started with. An object is an object in C and a morphism going down here. So a morphism really ought to be a morphism in C together with some condition. So, of course, what it's going to be is a morphism from C to C primed such that f of it makes this triangle commute. So what it is, is it's f from c to c prime in the category c, such that that triangle commutes. And the dual case for this is that we can take x going down to f, and what that has is objects, it's just all the other way up. You can all do this, I don't know why I'm doing it um, for you. Let's see, so x is up there, and we have f of c at the bottom. So now the objects are a c in c, and a morphism p from x to f of c, and of course, a morphism in this category is going to be something that makes the triangle the other way up from you. Here's p, here's p prime, and here's f of f, so it's going to be a morphism f, from C to C prime, such that this triangle can use. Now, one of the reasons I'm particularly fond of these comma categories is that they give us a very nice way of talking about adjunctions. But I'm going to leave that for now and plow on to an even further generalization of this comma category, um, which is that if we fix this functor but not the object X, in D, then we can do a further kind of comma category, which is that we can we can slice this category down to F. So now the objects are going to be uh, oh I have the other one on this side didn't I F down to D. So now the object is still going to look like this. Except that our object x at the bottom isn't fixed anymore. So now the data is c in c, x in d, and the morphism p. Okay, so now, what are morphisms going to be here? Well, if you look at the data for an object, it's an object here, an object here, and a morphism. So a morphism between them should be a morphism here, a morphism here, and a commuting condition. Okay, so let's write down what our two objects are. Here's one of them, and here's another of them. And let's think about what a morphism from here to here could possibly be. I'm going to draw it in orange. Well, of course, it's got to be 
a morphism down here, which I will call um, uh, G. And it's got to be a morphism up here. And just like before, it has to be F of something. So let's call that F of F. And this square has to commute. So let's, um, let's, let's, what are we going to do? Oh yeah, it's F from C to C primed, which corresponds to the object in C. We've got G from X to X primed, and we've got such that this commutes. So you can see that there's a sort of dimension shift that's going on. Whenever you look at morphisms between these objects, everything kind of shifts up a dimension. So this object becomes a morphism, this object becomes a morphism, and this morphism becomes a commuting condition. Of course, if we were in a higher dimensional situation, then this one cell would become a two cell, and then if there were any two cells here, those would become commuting conditions. Anyway, I'm uh, rather jumping ahead of myself. Of course, there's also the dual to this, but I think you can probably all work out the dual to this which would be D down to F. I just want to do the one even further generalization of the comma category situation, where you start with two functors, F and G, and you can form F going down to G. So what's that going to be? Well, now it's going to look like F of C, I don't like my notation anymore, going down to G of, well, what's an object of E going to be called? Uh, I think this has got confusing. I'm going to use little letters now. F of C and G of E. So E is an object of E. C is an object of C. And then there's this morphism in D. So we've got three things. We've got C in C. We've got E in E. And we've got P, this morphism in so it's a morphism in D. So now, what's a morphism in this category going to be called? Uh, so that's the objects. The morphisms, like over here, they want to be squares. And we want to have one morphism in C for this part, one morphism in E, and the commuting condition. So this shouldn't be very difficult anymore. Here's what one of our objects is, P. Here's our other object, P primed. Here's um, F of a morphism, F of something, uh, or F. Here's G of something, which now I really hate my notation, but I'm going to just grit my teeth and call it G. Um, so it's going to be, it's a morphism P from C to C primed. It's a morphism, no it's not, a morphism is a morphism F from C to C prime, uh, a morphism G from E to E prime, such that all of this lot commutes. Now, I hope that with all of these slice and comma category conditions, you can see that given the data we started with, we sort of made what was a sensible category out of them. We kind of constructed this category. It might have seemed a bit funny at first, but there wasn't anything very arbitrary. You know, there was nothing arbitrary about how we made these morphisms. It was completely obvious how these morphisms should be. And you should start thinking to yourself now that things like that, that where you, if you feel that you don't have any choice, if you feel that there's some, some non-free will going on, that there's some kind of universal property. And next time we'll see that all of these constructions are, in fact, they do have universal properties, and they are some kind of limit and co or co-limit, albeit in a much more uh, complicated kind of way.